When someone blames, they use words like, you always, it's your fault. You did it, he did it, she did it. He's always bothering me. That's putting the blame because I'm putting it on you. And what does that do when I say, you always do that to me. You always say that. But what does that do to a person? It makes them feel bad. It makes them get mad. So when you blame someone, it tends to make them mad. So if we're gonna be able to state the problem, we wanna make sure that we're not mad. Can somebody help us? What does empathy mean? Vanessa? Is a feeling or understanding what someone else is feeling? How do you think they're feeling and how do you know? Giselle G. I know that they're angry because I saw their bodies and their bodies look like they're kind of angry. Their bodies look like they are kind of angry. Okay, so maybe how they were kind of like this towards each other showed you that they were angry. Because, you know, happy people don't look like this to each other, right? Today, we were applying those core values to a novel we're doing. We're doing uh, The Girl Who Owned the City, in which the main character faces pretty difficult and uh, emotional situations. So that character now is being discussed in collaborative groups in which uh, how can our core values help Lisa in her situation in the novel? How can being honest or setting goals is a huge one? So by doing so, you're, you're able to bring it into the classroom. My students just finished a unit that I call Letters That Make a Difference, and I have to teach essays. So I teach it in a way that they find a real world problem that they want to change, they do research about it, they write to a real world person. So many of my students wrote to the mayor, wrote to David Hespi as our commissioner of education, et cetera. And then from there, they try to make a difference. After I model skills for learning, once they internalize it, they actually are monitoring themselves. So it actually cuts down on a lot of the time, I have to stop my lesson and say, okay, well, we have to handle this problem because they'll handle it for me. One student was upset because they felt like they didn't get their turn to use the jump rope. And they decided, okay, well, I'm not gonna argue. I'm gonna go sit down and calm down. It's integrated to all academic areas, so you can see the ties to the Common Core Standards for Social Studies, Science, Math, ELA, PE, so it's totally integrated. But also just the tools that the students learn, they're fun, they're engaging, there's videos, there's music, so you can tap all the modes that children have, whether the kinesthetic, get them up dancing, the audio, the visual. There's the transitions on there to help you with your transitions. As a brand new teacher, I wish I had had something like that to help me get the students engaged. I have incorporated morning meetings into their daily, daily practices. So all students gather together, everybody is involved, um, everybody sits in a circle. We're all welcomed, we're all greeted with a good morning and a handshake. And everybody has a voice, so since we're all on an equal playing field, we all feel important and we all feel valued. And I chose to be a mentor because I didn't have a mentor when I was a freshman because the year after is the first year we did it. So I decided to do it so I could just have what they did, what I didn't have and help them like get through the year smoothly and have like a good transition from middle school to high school. I sat there and witnessed children in times of conflict. I witnessed them use it and put it into action. And they felt so empowered. They feel as though, like not only in class, but in life, that they have a tool, an effective tool, to solve problems. One, two, three, four. Come on, Tarina, hit the floor. We're so glad you're here today. Hooray, hooray, hooray. The social emotional learning process at Eastside Central is working. The students are more caring they're more sociable towards one another because now we have this 20 minutes a day at the beginning of the day of share time. 
and the students have this time to share what's going on at home, how they feel, and if they can get it out of their system at the beginning of the day and they have their, their friends in the classroom to help them get through the day, it helps for a better day. It makes them feel a lot better knowing that everyone is caring about them and their situation. We read a sto story, now we're drawing a picture about feeling. That you treat everyone like a friend. Thank you. I like the way you do it too. Confused. Confused? How can you tell she's confused? Because she's doing this. I don't know. I don't know. She doesn't know which toy to choose from. Angry. angry. How can you tell she's angry? Because she's doing because she's, because she has her fist. What about her face? Because he's doing this. Exactly. Her eyes are half closed. I said myself and others too. I'll expect the best in all I do. I'm here to learn all I can to try. Oh.